So hello guys, Steve the Duke here and uh, this is a video that I hoped I would not have to make but here I am a year later saying that uh, I'm going to go on another low iodine diet and uh, start another radioactive iodine treatment. So roughly a, a year ago I did the same sort of diet and the same treatment and uh, the experience was quite interesting but this time it, it's going a lot better uh, concerning the diet and I'm a lot more aware of what I'm allowed to eat and what I'm not allowed to eat. So two weeks back I had a week full of uh, blood tests so on a Monday they took my blood test and then they also took an ultrasound around the neck area and uh, that ultrasound came out clear so there are no metastasis or residual cancer in the neck area so the only signs of it uh, came out in the blood tests and uh, what they do is they inject you with the thyrogen which I'm gonna get uh, with this treatment as well so that uh, elevates the cancer marker uh, values so i got a blood test on monday then i got another one uh, on wednesday and the final one on friday and they gave me the thyrogen injection on a monday and a tuesday and uh, this time i didn't get uh, i didn't vomit for the thyrogen injection or get too bad of a nausea i've just been i got my second dosage of thyrogen uh, yesterday was sort of semi-okay a little bit of nausea okay let's go So this was my second day at the hospital this week. Uh, I'm here four days this week for the uh, disease-free test. And uh, yeah, day two out of four done. So I started this low iodine diet last week, which was the week 43. And uh, the low iodine will be this week. And uh, it was last week. And then the treatment will be next week. So on a Monday and a Tuesday, I get the injections. And then from the Wednesday to the Friday, I will be radioactive in the bunker. So I'll just briefly go over what I can and can't eat because it's a lot more clear this time and uh, the choice of food is actually quite large. So in theory this diet is a low iodine diet so it doesn't actually mean no iodine but uh, since you have to follow some sort of diet so you might as well go with the no one or the no iodine one. So if I were to paraphrase what this uh, document says it says that you are to use a little amount of salt uh, because salt contains iodine and that's why you have to leave that one out and then pretty much any foods that contain salt so you have to leave those ones out as well. Milk may also contain some uh, traces of iodine so any dairy products are left out. Uh, this sheet does recommend that you can take six deciliters of milk per day uh, but uh, I've left that one out so no cheese and no dairy products so soy and uh, oat products are okay if they don't contain any salt fish and seafood is out of the option because seawater contains a lot of iodine naturally so the fish could have absorbed it the same goes with eggs i think so eggs are out of the option as well and uh, then there are also other types of food that uh, lower the iodine consumption so when i get the tablets or the pill uh, i shouldn't have eaten any of these so that the absorption will not be uh, decreased. So these are in Finnish, I'll put the translations here. Uh, lantu, nauris, kaalit, pinaatit, porkkana, pärnä, persikka ja mansikka. So I'm not eating any of those either. And I have to have my own packed lunch for the next two weeks. So I take to school whatever I had the day before and uh, that's usually pasta and potatoes and then some sort of uh, meat, so chicken or then just like a normal fried meat. And then tomatoes are a good source of uh, taste and so is olive oil so they're the ones i use for seasoning the food on a positive side some beer is salt free so so that's pretty much all that's been happening now so there was the week of blood tests and then there was the ultrasound and then there was the doctor's appointment where they said that i gotta do this still and uh, yeah so i'll go do that in the future and then i'll report back so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.